talk about the scientific literature and sustainable textiles. Uh, I bring this up because when I make a literature review assignment to students and ask them to explore topics related to sustainable textiles, their first choice, like it's my first choice, I'll be honest, is to head over to Google and start asking Google about topics of um, interest, right? Like you might put in uh, microplastics or you might put in textile recycling. And uh, like any good student, uh, myself included, we know that there's a lot of um, dross that uh, floats to the top of the gold that uh, may not be uh, worthy of our time, but we hope to dig through it and find something useful. However, uh, especially for students who are studying with me, I want to actually turn you and point you right away from right away from Google, um, and uh, at the very least uh, explain that textiles is a scientific discipline. And so, just like if I asked you to research sustainable chemistry, you oh wait, textiles involves chemistry, but at any rate. Pretend that it's completely separate. So I said, research sustainable chemistry. You might go to the American Chemical Society website and read a report they wrote about um, whatever, whatever. But you would probably also go to the major chemistry journal, you know, um, you know, chemistry is probably what it's called, and uh, start looking through for topics that are related to sustainability. Now, unfortunately, they may or may not have a, a title like um, sustainable chemistry. They probably have some incredibly long title that may be a little tough to figure out is actually even related to sustainability, but ultimately is. And so this is the challenge, right? As a student, um, we want you to be grounded in scientifically proven material. Um, the, the great example of this is the whole uh, rayon from bamboo situation. So uh, anyone who'd had even a little bit of a textiles background could have, when they heard about this idea that there's this new fiber called bamboo, um, and it comes from bamboo, um, might have thought, well, hmm, bamboo is a big grass plant, and we have other fibers like linen that are produced from grass, but um, uh, or a grass-like plant called flax, but... Um, it doesn't seem anything like this new material that they're producing, even though the woody stems of plants should produce pretty similar fibers. I wonder if it's the other kind of material that can be produced from grass, which is called rayon, right? But because you didn't have that background, people didn't even ask those questions. And so they started having whole long conversations about things like, uh, is this new fiber called bamboo antimicrobial? That, that had no, that didn't make any sense to textile scientists because we knew, well, maybe um, that isn't the place to start the question, right? Um, given that uh, bragging about a property created by um, maybe chemicals that kill bacteria through the rayon production process wasn't, um, you know, didn't make sense, right? That the whole thing just didn't make sense to scientists. Um, but because uh, people were, uh, quote, researching this topic using all non-scientific literature, um, because they maybe didn't know the scientific literature existed, one. Two, maybe they didn't understand what words to be looking for in the scientific literature, that they were so naive about the basis of the of the material that they, that they couldn't even, that rayon hadn't even come into their mind to let them do a search about it. Um, or or um, three, because, um, oh, and this is the really tough part, the literature doesn't exist yet, right? Um, you know, we have, uh, as scientists, we have all different reasons for researching something. And sometimes uh, uh, we're, we're um, influenced by industry. A lot of times that everyone um, who uh, gets a grant is being influenced by the grant in some way. So it depends on who's handing out the grant and uh, what we're focusing on there. That's just one of the weaknesses of, of science. And for those of us who um, try to do work uh, that's only partly funded by grants and the rest funded by the interests of our students, um, as in basically no cost research, um, we we have to pick at things really, really slowly. So um, the, the literature can take a lot of time to catch up, but that's how science works, right? We build it slowly. 
So um, when it comes to uh, conducting literature reviews, students ask me things like, oh, I really want to research um, uh, natural dyes versus um, synthetic dyes. There's not a, a lot of studies that actually just do this head to head, head comparison. You probably are going to have to go back and find some um, uh, studies that really look in depth at natural dyes and explain what the consequences of those are. And then you might have to find some studies that look at um, how uh, we might attempt to mitigate the um, waste created by synthetic dyes and compare those. In some cases, you're just actually going to have to learn the chemistry behind the synthetic dye to understand why certain ones could be called low impact fairly, for example, um, or you might have to, to understand the, the chemistry and the agricultural processes behind a natural dye to understand why um, those that require any kind of metallic mordant might be um, considered problematic. And so you're going to just have to do some more in-depth study. Um, so this is one of the the great and fun things. Um, so for my students, where I'd recommend that you start, number one, don't use Google. Go to Google Scholar, so at least you're getting that frame. You're getting away from, um, um, you know, uh, articles that, to be fair, maybe this is a little hyperbolic, but are probably about the same quality as those that suggest that Atlantis is in Bermuda. And um, so you're kind of moving into a, a, a reality-based frame by having peer review around it. Um, but then also actually look at some um, of the journals that are published in the area of textiles. Uh, they, the clue might be they have the word textiles in the title. Um, and then uh, uh, see what's published there. Again, there will likely be gaps, but at least the gaps help you understand what you may or may not be able to know based on the on the scientific literature. Also, look for databases like Textile Technology Complete, which we pay for uh, as a university, and my university pays for, for students to have access to, that actually pulls together all of the different journals that um, are in this area and allows you to do uh, interesting searches. You, you'll still end up with um, hundreds of results, but at least you know that um, you've had that additional vetting that it isn't um, a, a paper written by, I mean, an incredibly important and, and impactful person who is a blogger, right? And um, who uh, may or may not actually have ever had any kind of scientific training related to textiles. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's my take on uh, the literature. And uh, so I, I'd like to, to suggest that you put a frame around what you're working on in the exact same way that you would if you were um, a student of, um, uh, of any other scientific discipline and you were being asked to conduct a literature review related to your scientific discipline. Um, and uh, use that as your starting place. And then, then you can go back and forth and have conversations with some of those, um, uh, you know, uh, sometimes incredibly well-researched, um, very interesting, um, but potentially not peer-reviewed uh, resources that are, that are available, um, many of which are, when you really finally dig down to it at the very bottom, um, have an essentially capitalistic motive to support their per particular monetizing um, system in some way. Um, and so, uh, uh, which is the case um, when, when I dug deep down into the story of bamboo, what I found was an industry that had been hit hard by consumers, poor impression of rayon. It has a lot of problems as a material, um, but found this a brilliant way to deal with what is essentially a waste product from the paper manufacturing system. So, you know, there's that. Um, you know, uh, otherwise it's just waste cellulose. But um, the claims that were being made were, were not able to be scientifically supported. And, and, and that's the pity, right? Um, sustainability includes um, uh, telling the truth. And so uh, it's important for us to learn how to, to understand um, how to evaluate the truth. Um, and uh, as scientists, uh, peer review is one of the mechanisms we have for that. All right, so enjoy your literature search. <music>